name is Matthew Wilson and welcome to our first video on sequential circuits. Uh, today I will be showing off our first gated D latch that we have created. So a gated D latch is only going to have one input which is our D and it's only going to have two functions either a set or reset value and this enable switch here is basically just going to tell you whether or not something an action will be performed a set or reset will be performed or not at all so as you can see here if i just if this enable is at zero and i just nothing changes until i flip on this enable switch then our outputs start changing um, and as i mentioned earlier Pretty much the only difference um, from sequential circuits to from combinational circuits um, are that we're not necessarily looking at the gate level anymore. We are looking at memory and registers. So storing memory um, within registers, looking at clocks and timers and delays, dealing with a lot more of that stuff. Um, and then next, I'm going to be showing you guys our D flip-flop, uh, which is just a little bit different than the D gate or D latch, but it kind of builds off the same sort of concept as well. So over here in our D flip-flop, um, we have a new sort of input right here, and this is basically just our clock. Um, in order to make that tick manually, I will go ahead and show you guys now. So you just click your select tool here, click it, which will start the clock timer, and then get rid of it. And you can just turn this off and on. Um, basically, like I mentioned earlier in our D latch, what affects this is the uh, D input here. So for clarification here, go ahead and label this D. And we'll make this a Q as well. Alright, so basically when this clock is ticking here and our D latch is on, um, when I go ahead and turn this off, it's going to feed a 1 through, but it's not going to be in the output not yet until the next high input on the clock timer is next. As we can see there, so once that hits the high again, and, and I'll go into this in a bit once I show you guys the actual timer itself. Um, but this is kind of just playing around with it manually to kind of get to show you guys what I mean. So I turn this to zero, same three step kind of process. It's going to go off, but this output is still going to stay one until the next uh, high clock timer. And boom, it's going to turn into zero. And this circuit here, um, as I was mentioning, that it's the output does not change until the next high clock timer. And that is what we call positive edge triggered, is what this flip-flop is. And that is based on the timer. Uh, whenever, if you looked at it in a wavelength table, if whenever the... So to actually show you guys what I'm talking about, um, if you go over to simulate and click timing diagram, um, right here, just by our instructor, we were told to change the time scale to 0.2 seconds. Click timing diagram. And if I actually go ahead and go to simulate and click auto tick enabled here. So go ahead and turn on my circuit here. So if I go ahead and give this D an input of 1, you can see now that the output, so actually I'll go ahead and let this run for a second I'll go ahead and get into what I mean in a second here. Alright, so essentially 
Um, what I meant by the positive edge triggered versus negative edge triggered is the change in D, Y, and Q. Um, so mainly is our output of Q here. So these D and Y values will change. Um, D will start first and then next to the Y. And this is this gap is only because of delay through two D latches. Um, and then our Q output is only affected, will only be triggered when there is a positive edge triggered. So as you can see here, these values, see how they kind of go up like this, flat and then down. On the up, this little area from when it goes from a zero to a one, when that is going from zero to one, it is, po is considered positive. So when you're looking at a positive edged circuit, it will only change and only react on a positive edge area. So here, so the, so right here, the D and Y, D was one, Y was one. And then on that positive edge triggered, the Q output will turn to one. And then here, our inputs shut off our D and our Y shut off, and this will remain one until the next positive edge triggered, which will then turn up to zero, and the process pretty much repeats itself from there. And uh, today was quite a short video, but I look forward to creating more sequential circuit videos. Um, and that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you.